So in looking in looking at like what desks like I wanted to get and all that, like I was contemplating, I'm like, all right, I'll stick with the corner desk and all that. And going through and like typical, like went to Ikea, went through their whole thing. And then I saw this one desk and I'm like, oh, I've never seen that desk before. It's a new one. And it looked interesting. Um, I forgot the name of it. I got to look it up. But anyways, but what's neat about it is it's like a square desk that comes out, but then it has like a little indentation kind of like this that you kind of like slide into. And it has like a small shelf. So you got a small area where you could put like stuff underneath and then basically a, a, the, as wide as the desk is so you can literally put two monitors onto it and then a shelf up top and then it has two little side shelves that you could do and i'm like looking at it, i'm like huh that's an interesting this is and that and then i start reading the description and apparently ikea hired like a pro gamer to guide design like how would you design the perfect desk oh nice or, and that's literally how it is and then like i looked at it and i'm like and then it, typical thing is like you know how like you look at stuff in stores and you look at it and you're like yeah no that thing is too small yeah, and you go based on that. So you know, wife and I took the measurement stool and we came to the house like, shit, that looks like a lot bigger than I think it actually is. And sure enough, man, I got it here, and it's like, damn, this thing is nice. Like it's got shelves that you can sit like a tower underneath down there. Of course, if you got anything bigger than a small tower, it won't fit. <clears throat> Anyways, not that I'm bitter or anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, you got uh, you have to get the ultimate like gamer accessories for your desk. So it's like. You gotta have the little cup holder for the Mountain Dew. Oh, you know you dude. gotta have the pizza warmer. <laughs> this, hold on, this thing has look. You can see here it has literally built-in cup holders into the damn <laughs> into the thing, which is why I got I, I was also like, all right, this freaking thing, this guy thought this out. So like cup holders, so you can't accidentally bump something and knock it off, which is cool. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat is along the top shelf, it has like this little extension that sticks out about like two inches down. And it actually has pegs on there so you can like hang your headphones back there if you want to or hang whatever you want. So I'm like, all right, whoever this dude was, he thought this out. Like, I need to put some stuff up. Yeah, I'll tell you. You, you got you to have the little microwave. You got the little mini fridge. You know, you have the seat that gives you a nice massage. You have the self-cleaning keyboard if you're jacking off the online porn. And you got the poop sack in the back of your seat so you don't have to get up. No, no, the, the, the seat would be the, if you ever see, uh, saw Idiocracy, it would be that seat. The one with, like, the toilets built into the recliner. <laughs> That's true. And <laughs> we are so, so close to Idiocracy. Oh, dude, we're so right there. <laughs> we're one more election away. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah. yeah. Back with a new show deep in the basement. Professionalism turned off, screw the ad placement. Skip comedy trolling, plate full of dough. People get offended, you don't get the show. And welcome to another You Don't Get the Show, the show we look at a lot of crazy, freaky, sexy, funny things on the internet and bring it to you, and either you get it or you don't. I'm Jay LaRock, and I'm here with Randy. What's up? What's up, what's up? We are powered by the Obsolete Gamer Network. Thanks for watching us and listening to us on our podcast. And remember to subscribe and find us wherever you can, iTunes, all over the place. But we got uh, some crazy stuff today, man. Right? <laughs> um, the fourth story, I'm just going to start off with the, the actual just title. Because, I mean, that kind of just, that leads everything. It's like Baron Lead. It's from PC Gamer and said, Naked Demon with a Large Penis and Other Content Descriptors Awaiting for Approval on Steam. Hmm. Um, so basically, for those that don't know, there was a thing back in the day where Steam, they didn't like allow like really much any type of adult content, right? And we've done uh, stories about this before where uh, something like maybe a Henta game or something that had some kind of nudity or something, they'd try to port it over to Steam and Steam would either deny it or they would like make you heavily censor it to the point where it doesn't even match the, uh, the type of game that you're trying to create anymore. So what ended up happening is Steam decided to allow basically any type, as long as it isn't something that is considered illegal or trolling or something that's like just overly the top. But basically they're allowing you to have like adult games on Steam now. 
But the thing is, is that you have to go through like an approval process to make sure. So did you get to look at this game, Boob, Boob Saga, the video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this thing is hilarious. Uh, oh, Lord. Basically, so the game is that, in this case, the game that they were trying to get through was called Boob Saga. And it contains a naked demon with a large p- penis. And there's also a resurrection via an opening <laughs> in something that resembles an anus. So that's just <laughs> that's just part of it. That's like part of the description. It's not even like you're writing the entire game, but this is like what you have to present to Steam to let them know all the different like major things so that it's not like you know hidden and then later on they pull your game from Steam. So you actually have to go and write out. And I kind of feel sorry for all the developers that have to do this, but I guess if you make a game like this, you gotta be prepared. But you gotta write down, hey, there is a naked demon with a huge penis. So that Steam knows, so you get your game on there. I mean, what do that's you think funny. of that? I mean, like that—that's the whole thing. Like when you sit there and you look at it, like they've always um, had that whole thing where it has to have like descriptors and things like that. And the thing about it is, is that you like they did that because of the whole like if, if you searched for a game, like you don't rem- remember what the title is. But you're like, oh, I remember it was like a platformer, blah, blah, blah. Like you could type that in and then it'll like bring you a list. And at least then if you like remembered what the thumbnail looked like, you could do that. So like it doesn't surprise me that they're like, hey, now that we're allowing these like adult type things, like we have to add all these different descriptors to it. But it's just like it's funny as hell how like they have these (laughs) now descriptors that they're going to go for it. And it's like, Oh, you're going to see the floodgate of like, Hey, so we want to put this and this and this as a descriptor for our game. Yeah. It's funny too. Cause like using that, it's like, man, I can't remember the name of the game, but there was this huge demon penis. Let me type that in. There it is. Thank you, Steve. You you never, you never disappoint. It's kind of funny, too, because I'm looking at um, the picture that is associated with this article, and yeah. it just makes me think back to what we were just talking about before the show about the Soul Calibur IV cal- um, oh my custom creator. And it's like, I'm looking here, you can like adjust her horns, the suit, <laughs> but then it's like foot, boob size, ass size, fatty size. I don't know what fatty size is. Is that, is that like girth, I guess? I guess, yeah. So I guess it's like you really you're really able to play around with exactly how you want want her to look. That's hilarious. Oh my god. I, and and the thing is is that these games like you would think oh these probably don't make a lot of money or they're not that well put together but man you'd be surprised. Oh yeah, I was about to say you'd be surprised at the stuff that people will pay money for. Not only that, how much they put into it. I mean, I've seen some of these sex games, you know, for research only, guys, for research only. That I mean, they look better than some of these, you know, indie games out there. It's like they put a lot in. And you go on Patreon, some of these places are reeling in thousands of dollars a month mm-hmm. to, to break out these games that are like sex-rated games. So it's like, I mean, and there's been sex games since the beginning of computers. I mean, you oh, had God, them on yeah. Commodore, old PC, Atari 2600, so... I mean, this is uh, this is nothing new, but man, it's a huge like sub industry that you don't hear a lot of. Mm-hmm. But it makes it's like porn. It's like everyone knows it makes a lot, but then when you hear the numbers of how much pornography makes, you're like, holy mm-hmm. shit, they make a lot of money. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy when you like look at how much the adult industry itself makes. It's like <sighs> you're like seriously, like it, it makes how much now? Like it's scary at how much it makes. And you would think it would go down with how much porn you can get for free online, but nope, still making lots of money. Dude, Someone's paying for that shit. I remember when, whatchamacallit, when the whole thing, when like 4K stuff started coming out, that they were saying that like, you know, once once these uh, big, big uh, companies that would do the adult films started upgrading their cameras to the 4K, that like a lot of the older adult stars hated it. Because oh, like, yeah. they'd have to like cake on the makeup because like, it showed so much detail that they're like, yeah, people could see the wrinkles like everywhere, like every wrinkle. Yeah, I was like, shit, dude, that was. Hol-. I remember reading those articles that they're like, yeah, it's, that the technology had advanced too far, too fast for the industry, and I'm like, nah, I mean, your ass is getting old. 
<laughs> and then you get the VR too, so you, you just get this huge oh God, wrinkles in no. your face. You're like, okay, no, enough. That is the, the funniest thing where like like when I got my Oculus Rift, I cracked up at that because like I will say that that the the gaming experience wise on an Oculus Rift, like it's amazing. Like those VR headsets, it's so cool. And you 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 take for granted just like how it is. And I laugh because um before I got my Rift, one of our friends had one of the ones for like the phone and I checked it out. I'm like, yeah, this is actually pretty decent graphics and all that. And then like I played, um, oh, I forgot the name of that free game that it comes with, with the Rift, but it's like the uh, Robo Recall, I think is the name of it from Epic Games. And like, I'm looking at this and it's hilarious because like the beginning of the game, like it's supposed to be about like that they're robots that become like they, they start rebelling and blah, blah, blah. And like the game starts out where you're like standing in the street and you're looking. And, like, you can see around, you see, like, it's a news story going on about how, like, oh, more and more of these robots. And, like, all of a sudden, like, these robots start coming and standing and watching this newscast. And you're, like, turning around and you're, like, looking around and you literally see the, like, more and more standing. And then all of a sudden, like, you hear this, like, thing that sounds like an auditory thing. And you see all the robots doing this and grabbing their heads because they're, like, getting hacked. And then every single one of the robots that's around you just does this and turns and looks at you and that like and it does this like vroom, where they're all like looking at you and then like it just fades and i was like holy christ but then like at the same time i was like yo this freaking looks amazing i'm like compared to the phone one and i'm like why the hell and then i like started thinking about it. i'm like oh because literally a rift and a vibe it's just literally a monitor that's mounted on your face your computer's the one that's doing all the rendering and all that and i'm like okay that explains why this thing looks so amazing you know yeah i mean i that and, and like i said you apply that to porn <laughs> and oh, it's dude. yeah no it's 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 insane like and then I, I started thinking about it, like i remember like reading an article where they were saying like oh like the vr headsets were were blowing up because they were making it cheaper and then it was another great thing for the adult industry and i'm like wait huh and then i'm like oh well yeah if you technically make it look like it's your it's coming out of your eyes and you have this this damn basically a headset that makes it look like you're you're looking at from the perspective of the camera then yeah sure and that's why uh, there's more lonely people out there. <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. why these games where you can do all kinds of sexual stuff is more popular. Uh, just guys, remember to actually interact with real people because a lot of things you do in the game will not translate into the real world. Just remember that. Um, and with Valve and Steam allowing all this stuff, like I said, one of the things that they do not allow is what they consider like trolling. And we have an hmm. example of that. Uh, from one angry gamer that dot net, which almost kind of seems like this person is kind of like on the side of this game. So we'll let you decide wh what you think. So this one is called Gay Nation, a gay game for gays. So I mean, first of all, that already is just that's just hitting you right off the bat. So this game was actually supposed to be released in May, and it didn't get put on there. At least as as far as what I found, it never got its way back, and it got pulled basically for what. Steam calls trolling under their new guidelines. So as we just said, they allow basically almost anything adult, but if they find something that's considered like trolling or trying to attack somebody, then they're going to pull it. So in this case, this, is, uh, this was a visual novel, and it was about Russia's attempt to destroy the United States by dropping the ultimate gay bomb on the nation, killing most straight people, and turning everyone else gay. I don't really know how it determines which ones they're going to turn gay and which ones they're going to kill, but okay. Uh, the story follows a young man's attempt to navigate a totalitarian police state where heterosexuals become outlawed. So <laughs> it, it, it looks like at first Valve approved the game store page, uh, but then basically after a couple of days of it being up, it got pulled. I don't know if somebody actually complained about it. I'm probably sure they did, but they oh, pulled yeah. it and they basically said it was trolling. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I was looking at this and some of the other games from Dank Boy Games, and it just it does seem like trolling. I mean, look, I, I get it. It's, everyone wants to talk about freedom of speech and putting things up, but it's like there are other games. Did you see the other one that they had? Uh, penis, was it? Penis uh, Hunter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A big penis hunter. Yeah. That was their other game that they have. I mean, they're called Dank Boy. 
they have a game now, Gay Nation, and it's about straight people getting attacked. And here's the thing. Um, if you want to know about trolling, it's kind of like in the context. Like people say, oh, how come people trip out when you say this and do things? It's kind of when you start reading how these people defend things. Like, okay, so they talked to one of the representatives of Dank Boy about the game and how they were upset about it being pulled. So this is what they said kind of in defense. They said, one of the goals of the game is to expose and mock certain double standards that exist in our society, such as prejudice against majority groups being socially acceptable. Now, we kind of know what kind of code that is. It's like you could pretend like you don't understand what that is, but that's kind of code for white guys can be attacked and it's okay. Anyone else gets attacked and it's not okay. And it's like, listen, as a logical person, I can understand some of that because the majority does seem to get attacked now. But it's like, I don't think that you could try and create some kind of false equivalency in saying it's, this, it's the exact same thing. And when that is your defense, that's more likely to make Steam, Valve, whatever, pull your thing for trolling. Because they think that you're just trying to troll people and rise people up. Mm, true. I mean, just going basically on, on the premise of the game, Randy, wouldn't you say that they're probably just trying to troll people? I mean, it's it's kind of sounds like it. It's it's one of those weird, like things where it's yeah, like they they came out afterwards and were like, oh, it's the satire and blah 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 blah, and it's god, like looking at the thing and and just seeing how the like the YouTube video that shows like bits of the game and all that and like. It's like, yeah, you can write satire, but at the same time, it's like if you push it a little too far, you know you're gonna piss somebody off. And once you once once the 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 wheel starts getting squeaky, it's gonna get louder and louder and louder. And eventually, like they're gonna have to make that judgment call of like, do we do this or do we not do this? You know, um, that's I think the the thing that you have to look at um, when they're doing stuff like that. It's uh, yeah, they ha they have to make the judgment call and all that, and they're like, "What's going to be better for our brand itself? Like, not just your game company type of a thing." And that's, I think, where like like you say, if they feel like, "Hey, this kind of feels like something that shouldn't be here," blah 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 blah, they're going to go ahead and pull it. Like, and I don't think it's just you know, the the developer is going to try and say like, "Oh, we're trying to like have our own free speech and da da da," and it's like, "Yeah, that's cool," but at the end of the day, like you, you kind of have to, as your company, be like, "Is this something that it'll make them look bad if they okay it or not?" And I think that's kind of like, I, I mean, at, at least on the good front is at least Valve is being a bit more open and saying, "Okay, let's let's start releasing this stuff" because they've heard enough from the gamers side saying like oh it sucks that i want to get this game and i can get it through steam but then i have to go like looking for this weird patch to patch it back to the original yeah you know game and the thing is is that if you're trying to like expose how you feel like your group is being attacked you don't do it by trying to like make fun of someone else because mm -hmm. you're no one's gonna listen to you in that case, yeah. you know. Like you have to be smart about it. You could say free speech and all, okay, that's fine, but your message is gonna get buried if you're like, hey, let's make fun of these people and say, what if we started killing straight people and making people gay? And it's like, no one's gonna look at you and say, man, let me just think about your plight because of no, it, it doesn't work mm -hmm. like that. You can't attack someone else right. to get your point across. E look, even in the case of like rights on the other side, like. Whenever you see like black people attack a white person, that's that isn't gonna help black causes. You know, no. it's like sure, maybe someone will try and justify it too, but it's still wrong if you're being violent or you're attacking someone or you're making fun of somebody. That's not mm -hmm. gonna help you. It's just gonna make you look like an asshole. Even if you try to hold up a sign and say, Oh, I'm doing this for my people, not by attacking someone else. So yeah. I was about to say, if if you show a video of you holding a sign and a cop comes by and you throw a rock at the back of his head, yeah, yeah, you, you you're not helping your side out one bit. Like if the, if you're holding the sign, the cop walks by and stops and then decks you, <laughs> while you're just like holding your sign. Okay, <laughs> that fights towards your 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 group or whatever. Like it's 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 crazy because. Uh, it's one of those things that like people have have just become overly sensitive to stuff, 
like I totally understand, and I I'm I'm for one that like I believe if it, like everybody should have the same rights no matter what you are, who you are, where you came from, all that stuff. And what's sad is we we're living in a time now where the animosity is coming out is being brought out in people that they used to like. Hey, I do this behind closed doors, and now <laughs> and. Let's not go into one of those rants again and turn this into a political <laughs> show. But say what you'll say, but literally Trump is sitting there bringing out the worst in America by holding these stupid rallies and standing up there on his little soapbox and just chatting away and blah, 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 blah. And he's just getting everybody going and going and going and going. And the thing is, is that logically... That's the problem. It's not going to work. This is this is where I have the more problem. I could even separate some things and put it over here and be like, okay, let me examine this. And I say to yourself, if I'm going to attack people and get angry and say all this hateful stuff, what is the chance of that working? Like we see that in video games. Like mm -hmm. the idea that if you rage and yell at somebody, it's going to make them a better player. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. You may have that one friend that you personally know. And he's terrible at a game and you yell at him and call him names and somehow he got better. But that's going to be one out of hundreds of people that oh, when yeah. you try that, they're gonna, it's going to be the reverse effect. Either they're going to get defensive and attack you or they're going to start losing on purpose. So it's the same thing you apply in real life. If you're just going to scream and yell and fight, and unfortunately we've had just over a weekend, we've had bombing attempts and we've had shootings from oh, God, angry yeah. people. And it's like, do you really think that that's going to change or is it going to make – people that are already against you or don't understand your plight even harder. It's the same thing with gamers. <laughs> right. Like when something happens, like the shooting in Orlando with the gamers, it's like if you just decide that, oh, let me attack non-gamers and make fun of them because they don't understand it, that, the non-gamers are going to look at us and be like, you see, this is exactly what we expected. This you don't win with that kind of attitude. So it's like yeah. you got to change your approach. and that, That's the problem behind it. It's like no one's thinking about the long term. I remember when that story came out. I was like, "Oh, th th there it goes again." Florida, not like the rest of us, you know. And and the bomber guy was from Florida too. I, I gotta leave no, I'm the telling, state. I'm telling you, bro. That the, <laughs> I gotta get out of here, bro. It's gonna get to a point where they're gonna freaking do what they did in that old ass Looney Tunes cartoon, where they're just gonna take a saw and just cut <laughs> the land and just have Florida float away from the rest of the United States. They're like, we've had enough of this place. <laughs> just, just get the saw and cut away. All right, so on a lighter note to end our last story, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, and this comes from NintendoSoup.com. And it's uh, Vatican releases Pokemon Go clone for Catholics. <laughs> uh, this one is called Follow JC Go. Uh, and JC stands for Jesus Christ, if anyone's not certain what that stands for. <laughs> and um, so as a third-party developer, um, <laughs> they created this game. Oh, you mean Niantic didn't do this? Come on. No, no, it's third party. Third party. And basically, it's a game that's similar to Pokemon Go. But here's how it works. Instead of catching Pokemon, players have to roam around the world and find Catholic saints and other biblical characters to join their evangelization team. Is that right? Yeah, I guess Evangel so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, evangel uh, evangelization yeah, like team. There you evangelization go. team. And instead of attacking them, you have to answer some of their questions before they can join your team. Now, this was in Spanish, and my Spanish is horrible. Do you were you able to read like any of the questions that it said, like like what it asks? Let me see what the hell does it ask? Because it's like trivia, and it has like a picture of like a saint. And and yeah. what's weird is like you're okay. So think about this, guys. You're still using it. Still has that map. So you know, for those of you watching it. You'll see it, but for those on the podcast, it still has a street map of where you're at. So you're walking around, and there's these icons, and you basically walk up to them, and it pops up this thing, and it's like trivia, and then it'll answer questions. Some of them are true and false questions. I guess some of them are multiple choice. And you, if you, I guess, answer them correctly, they join you. And I guess if you don't, I don't know if they disappear. Do you get more chances? No, but... yeah, no. it's, it like ask a question. It's kind of weird because, and then you have like two answers at the bottom. It looks like, yeah. And you have to choose one of the two questions and based on what you answer, they either join you or don't. 
I wonder that's how so fun, fun that is, even the Catholics. Like, I, I just, I don't know. That's too fun. <laughs> it's, it's just like, hey, I got St. John. Yeah, hey, do you have St. John? I mean, you can't battle him, I guess. That'd be um, funny if you could have, like, uh, religious battles. But instead of fighting, like, that, uh, they had that God fighting game when you had Jesus fighting. But mm-hmm. maybe they'll just, like, you know, preach to each other. And it's like, whoever has the best sermon wins. <laughs> <laughs> How many souls have you converted today? <laughs> so... This is funny. I I find it hilarious that you found this on a Nintendo, like fan type page yeah. website. So, if you remember, I think it was the last show that we did, either that or the show before that, where we talked about uh, Philip uh, Mewson. Ah, yes. Which you remember? Okay. So, to 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 finally like just recap back, it basically he got caught plagiarizing. He came out with. His apology video, if you want to call it that, where he literally didn't apologize. Like he literally apologized. Like I'm it almost sounded like more of like, I'm sorry that I got caught. Yes. And like called out Boomstick Gaming was like, hey, I remember what it was like to have a small channel and you just gotta put the work out there and keep it going. You'll probably get like he didn't even apologize, this guy. So then he he had that video out, and you remember he pulled the video because of just how many comments and negative comments he was getting. So apparently, uh, two weeks ago, about a week ago, he released his first new video that he reviewed something. And at the beginning, he kind of like starts going over almost like an apology. He's like, oh, I dealt with some dark things and blah, 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 but thank you guys. Didn't apologize again. And then just ran into this 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 review video, and like again, a ton of people sitting there like putting like, dude, like just come out with an apology video, dude. Just admit up to what you did and blah blah. And it was funny because like I normally I, I you know you gotta love some of the comments you'll get on the internet from these things, but like I sat there and I was like I have to put a comment in, and I literally put in the comment and I said, dude, you have to. Like the the thing about all this is people are willing to forgive and forget. The problem is if you never address the issue and you never apologize, people will never forget. You know? And I said, what you need to do is you need to come up with a legitimate like apology video calling out the people that you work with, the people that you took stuff off of, and apologize to them. And you will see that people will do it. I said, if you don't plan on ever doing this, I wholeheartedly would give up on doing any type of journalistic type of uh, of things because there's no way you're going to do it. Like even on YouTube, like no one's going to believe. And then I sat there and I put dot, dot, dot. I'm like, okay, now that's out the way. Let's see where he grabbed this review from, you know. Let's see what, what internet site he grabbed this review from and this and that, you know. like, But it's, it's a thing like that. Like I, I, I use – the easiest way to kind of like comparison, if you think about it, is look at what happens in Hollywood sometimes. Is you'll have an actor that'll do something bad, like Robert Downey Jr. Let's say he abused drugs, he did all sorts of crazy shit and all that. And he had a choice. He said, Hey, I could either be like, Nope, didn't do that stuff. And of course, people were going to grill him for it. Or he did what he did. And he's like, You know what? Yep, I did the drugs. I did all this bad shit. I went and I did my time. I'm clean now. And I'm sorry that I did that. And I'm sorry that I put all these people through this. And look at where he is right now. Yeah. Like everybody forgave him. But when you have like people that they're like, nope, wasn't me and all that. And they're like, but we have film of you doing it. Nope, that wasn't me. That was a body double. No, but but it's you've literally signed your name with your executive. No, 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 that wasn't me. That probably copied my like when you do shit like that, forget it, dude. People will never forget that crap. Well, I think part of the problem is the bigger thing with what's happening with the internet and that's why how people act, it does influ- influence you, even like politicians and stuff. Like people mm-hmm. act like nothing matters. But you got to understand that when you see other actions, some people do it. You might not. You may see someone acting like a fool and say, hey, look, I'm not going to act that way. Or maybe your parents are taking care to make sure you act that way. Other people don't. Like most of the time on the Internet, when you get into a conversation with someone, especially on Reddit, they can't let it go. Nope. Like you can prove that their point is wrong. And they can't say, okay, you're right. You were, you, I was wrong. My fault. No. They'll attack you. And then if they can't beat you with facts, 
then they'll start just attacking your character or looking through yeah. your posts trying to find stuff. And it gets to the point where you realize like these people, it's just in them. They can't say I'm sorry. They can't mm -hmm. say I'm wrong. They can't take a loss. And then even if they're winning the argument, they got to rub it in. Oh, I'm owning you in this argument. I'm like, what are you winning? <laughs> you're yeah. not winning anything. <laughs> Most likely you're losing in the game of life because that shit bleeds into real life and people oh, yeah. can pick up on that shit. You may say, oh, this is my online persona. No, people can pick up that shit. When I go out, I can tell people who just they spend too much time online and they don't know how to act in a in a public setting, oh, yeah. and it, it sticks out like a sore thumb, man. And that was the thing that I laughed my ass off at, like when they caught him on that Dead Cells review, and he was like, "Oh, whatever, blah blah. You go ahead and prove, try and prove to me that I've done this before." I'm like, "Yep, internet's gonna fucking drag your ass through the mud with this one." And then like I crack up how literally. All these people sent all these links to the dude that wrote the original thing, and he had like almost a fucking like line by line his review. He pulled it from this original one. This review, he pulled it from this original. Like, and they had like ten reviews going back years. And he was, and and then it was like so funny just to see him. Like, all right, what else you got? You're gonna try and whittle your way out of this, you know? And that's the thing. It's like. There's a good chance. I mean, look, unfortunately, if you if you roll up the internet, someone might get you anyway. But there's a good chance if he came out and said he was sorry and did like you said, maybe they wouldn't have looked up his other work. Maybe oh, they would have yeah. been like, yes, yeah, some people would have been like, screw you, you suck, whatever. That It's the internet. You're not going to get all your fans back. You're not going to make everyone happy. You can yep. put up a, a picture of anything and someone's downvoting it and someone's saying it sucks. Yep. But you'd probably win over enough where people will be like, well, I don't feel like attacking this guy anymore. There's another target that's better to go after than the guy who apologized. Mm -hmm. But if you light yourself up and say, come at me. Yeah. The, <laughs> moment, really? the, the moment he didn't say sorry and said, come at me, bro. I was like, you know, the internet just like, hold my beer. And yeah. they, went going, they went nuts looking for that. You stuff, put man. people to work. Bro, yeah. You did that shit. Yeah, I'm sure there were people with full-time jobs at work just <laughs> typing away, just like, oh, I'm going to find some shit. Seriously. Uh, but uh, if you're Catholic, uh, go get that JC Go. Get yourself some uh, Catholic saints, man, because <laughs> <laughs> you got to collect them all. We need, we need just to make a whole bunch of clones. That's why I say I'm going to do some research and see how many other clones they are, man, because oh, like, we need one for each state, like what states are known for or something. Like here, I don't know. Like we'd have to, we have to pick something about Miami, like maybe drug dens. So you got to go find like the or the pill uh, power factories. Up, power up with bath salts and stuff. Start <laughs> eating people. Yeah, you're like, hey, look, I found another bath salt factory. All right. <laughs> God. All right. So that was another episode of You Don't Get the Show. As I said, always give us your feedback, whether it's good or whether it's bad. We still want it. And then hit us up with subscribes on the YouTube and iTunes. You know, all the other podcast places where you find us. But uh, till next time, remember, never stop gaming. Peace. Peace.